what other thoughts do you have about little moments versus big moments? Um, well, I, I, I really am beginning to see that for myself, that I, I do feel a lot calmer because I think I am relating better to my anxiety. And I think in general, um, I, uh, I'm just feeling calmer and more relaxed. Even my husband has noticed it. And um, certain things don't just don't trigger it the way they did. Like, um, like today, you know, I kind of looked at this podcast as, oh, I got to prepare for it. Like I did when I was teaching, like a prepare for a class. And I think I mentioned last week, I would go over stuff over and over to make sure I'd say it just right. And then um, that just right thinking, or what if I miss something, or, or, or what if I don't say, what if I can't stick to the topic and I say the wrong thing? It's not only going to not be good for me, it's not going to help anybody else. And then I thought to myself, wait a minute, um, th this is a conversation. It, it doesn't, there is no right or wrong. And it, as it turned out, today was, um, turned out to be a lot busier than I expected. I, I had to, I, I've had a toothache the last three days and um, not super bad, but it's right where I had dental work done. And so finally, I thought, you know, I better, I better just let the dentist know. So I had to go into the dentist tomorrow. Then I had another thing that I, I Aaron, that I had to do. And then the friends that we had wanted to spend three days with us, our good friends, who we had said no because of COVID, well, they wanted to at least come visit. And, and then I thought, oh, I got to clean the house. I got and I could feel that panicky feeling inside of me, like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna have enough time to prepare for the podcast, and this is too much, and how I'm gonna have to clean the house instead and do all this. And you know, Maggie, I was able to say it's okay. I, this is okay, and it's probably important for me to to kind of be pushed off my schedule because I I do think that I can. That that's part of that rigidity, you know. I want it to be a blank slate so that um, I can be ready. But I guess I, I think I'm starting to realize that I, I can be ready regardless, you know. Yeah. Oh, so you're talking about three really different but connected triggers, which I really appreciate. So there's the type of whoosh of anxiety that maybe comes from a memory or something else that you're thinking about. Somebody said something and you start thinking about it and it gives you the feeling of anxiety and the urge to go jog. And then you're talking about an intrusive thought, an unwanted intrusive thought, maybe about like, what if I hit someone with my car? And now you're talking about more like generalized worry of everyday life. Will I be ready for this? Will I be ready for that? Will I be ready for that? Um, and all of those can be really anxiety provoking kind of in different ways. Like the texture of the anxiety is often different for those different scenarios. Um, but what is really coming to mind for me is that Regardless of the diagnostic category, if you can see all of those as processes that are created, maintained, and intensified by the way that you resist against it, like if you if you're rigidly thinking um, every time, like this is how the day has to go, and so if I set the schedule this way, then I'm gonna I ha I'm overwhelmed if it doesn't go this way. That's gonna be really anxiety provoking. Or if you have a belief, if I have a thought and it could hurt someone, um, then it'd be irresponsible not to check, then that would maintain, um, like for instance, the harm OCD with driving. So I really like the way that you're able to see what your triggers are and that they're, they're different, but there's a lot of parallels. 